If you've ever built an AI agent in NADN and thought, why is it saying weird stuff that I didn't ask for? Yep, that's called hallucination. And when you're building AI agents for real business use, like handling customer messages, writing emails, or automating workflows, those random made up responses, they're a deal breaker. Now, the good news is you can actually shape how your AI agent behaves by tweaking a few key settings like temperature, top P, and token limits, and etc. These aren't just techie sliders, they directly control how smart, safe, and predictable your AI agent is. So in this video, I'll show you how to fine tune these settings your AI agent gives reliable, focused, and on-brand responses every single time, whether you're building it for your team or for paying clients. So let's dive right in. Now these settings that I'm talking about, this is inside your chat model itself. So for example, this is a random AI agent or a typical AI agent in NADN. Now the trigger could be a chat, it could be email, whatever it may be. But when you attach a chat model, for example, an open AI chat model or a open router chat model that you can have option to, to interact with any of these models that are available through open router. So for example, let's take a look at open AI chat model, for example. So once you select the model, whether it's GPT-4 mini or 4.1 or whatever it may be, in the bottom, there's this section called options. So if you click on add options, you have all these different options that are available for you. And these are the ones that we're going to specifically focus on. I'm going to go through each one of these and explain them exactly one by one to, to let you know when to use them, what are they used for, and then also give you examples of business use cases. Now, if you're part of the community, I have put together this document in the business section. So it's part of the uh, client success toolkit. So you will have access to this right here. Everything explained there. But if you're not part of the community, that's fine. You can just follow me along. I'll explain each of them one by one. So that way you have an idea of when to use this for what purpose. All right. So the first one is going to be the frequency penalty. Now, Think of this as a don't repeat yourself filter, right? It tells the AI agent to avoid using the same words over and over again, even if they're technically valid. So for example, if you set the parameter here to low, so like 0.0, .0 then this is fine for data tasks like if you're generating JSON or code where repetition is expected. Now, if you set this high, so for example, if you set this to 1.0, then what this does is this adds variety. So this is useful when um, output starts sounding more robotic, robotic or, or spammy. Now, a good business use case for this is like, let's say you're building a support AI agent that keeps saying, let me help you with that, right? And every single message. So boost frequency penalty to reduce the redundancy. So for example, you would increase the penalty here to reduce the redundancy and make the responses more like natural and human like. But if you keep it at zero, like I, like I mentioned before, this will sound more robotic and this will be useful if your output is JSON or some kind of a code. All right, so the second one is maximum number of tokens. Now, this controls how long the response is allowed to be. One token is approximately three quarter of a word. So if you're generating long emails, you need more tokens. If you're generating short tweets, then you need fewer. So if you put negative one here, which when you click on this option, the default is negative one, this uses the model's full length and it could go up to thousands of tokens. So if you want any kind of uh, predictability as far as how much word or how many tokens you're allowed, then make sure you set something. So for example, if you set something between, let's say 50 to 100, now this would be ideal for alerts, title, or really short replies. If you put like three to 600 here, then this will be better for like summaries, uh, product descriptions, or full length emails. So for example, if your output of this AI agent is a full length email, then you might wanna put something like 300 to 600, right? So because that way it can give you that exact um, detail. Now, a business use case, again, would be, let's say you're creating a real estate listing generator or a weekly newsletter bot, right? So you would set the higher token limit, like 700, to make sure that the AI can write complete useful content without cutting off mid-sentences. So very, very important. Make sure you utilize this. Now, obviously, you know, you, when you're creating complex workflows, especially for uh, for businesses and for clients, you need somewhere to host these things. And one of the best options is the hostinger because I use this for personal use case, of course, because if you want security, if you want reliability, especially for clients, and you want them to host in a cloud server, um, that's that they have full control over, then Hostinger is the best option. Now I'll put the link in the description. You can click on this, you'll come right here. This is the 
and it in uh, uh, VPS. So the best option, in my opinion, is the KV KVM2 because this gives you all of the necessary, especially whether you're using this personal or for your clients, this is the best option available. So you would just click on this plan. So you're just gonna click on choose plan here. And this is gonna bring up all these different options that are available. Now, the best options is to get the longer one. So that way you save the most amount of money. You can do 24 or 12 months. I would suggest going with the 24 months because this, this will give you the, be the, the best deal. And then also the great thing is because Hostinger has been kind enough to sponsor this video, they gave us an extra coupon code. So if you click on uh, have a coupon code, all you have to do is type AI workshop and this will, click on apply, this will give you an additional 10% off. I mean, this is honestly the best deal for like 12, 24 months, you get $150. I mean, that's, it doesn't get better than that. Uh, you would leave everything else as it is. The great thing about Hostinger is they have server locations all over the world. So if you're in the West Coast, you'll just leave, and this will automatically select everything for you. Um, and then the only thing you need to do in the left-hand side here is you're gonna click uh, search for NADN, and this will bring this one right here. So you're gonna click on this, and you're gonna click on confirm. That's it, you're gonna click on continue. This is the easiest way to um, set this thing up. All you have to do is just sign up for an account or if you already have an account, you can log in. So I'm just gonna use my account that I already have. This is gonna load it in a little bit. All right, and then you'll set up your, put your billing address and your payment and then all you have to do is click on continue and this will get this thing installed. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and set my stuff and then I'll show you what's next. All right, so once you put your payment and address information, everything will get, you'll click on install, it will install everything and you'll be right here. So now all you have to do is click on manage and this will open up your, you can skip the section. This will open up your dashboard and then everything will be running right here. The only thing you need to do now is click on manage app and this will open your NADN and then now if it's your first time, it will make you sign up. If uh, you've already used this before, you'll just sign in and that's it. That's all you need. It's the simplest way to host NADN on your own uh, local cloud server and and then you have again the reliability of Hostinger so whether you're building this thing for clients or for your own personal use in my opinion this is the best option out there now the next one is going to be the response format now this defines how the AI should actually or structure its answer so most of the time text is fine right but for advanced automations you may need to use JSON for example so by default it does come as text but if you want to have if you're generating like uh, advanced AI agents that the response you wanted to be JSON, so you would just select JSON. But you can see right here, it says you must include, uh, if you're using the JSON format, you must include the word JSON in the prompt um, in your chain or agent. And again, so there's a, a few uh, uh, things that you need to do extra here. So this will be particularly used for more advanced AI agents. But for, for most of it, you're gonna leave it as text. Now, a business use case for this would be, so if your AI agent is part of, let's say, a sentiment analysis workflow, right? And you wanted to return a particular uh, JSON that says, like, for example, sentiment equals positive, then you would select this to be JSON. So that way you can uh, directly use that output downstream in your NADN logic. Now, the third one is called the presence penalty. Now, this encourages idea diversity. What it means is that it nudges the model to explore new concepts instead of circling around the same exact theme. So if you set something like you know, 0.0, .0 which is the standard, this will stick to what's already been mentioned. But if you set, if you set something like higher, like 1.0, this will push for novelty and creative leaps. Now, this will be useful if you're developing, let's say, a brand name, brand name generator for clients, for instance, right? So you would increase the presence penalty to ensure that you don't get the same flavor of names over and over again. Now, this is, uh, this is key for, for creative, uh, brainstorming bots. So you can use that whenever the creative uh, is necessary. And then the next one is called the sampling temperature. Now this is also a very important one as well. This controls how random or predictable the AI agent's output is. So if you put something like uh, low, so if you put something between like 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, now what this will do is this is like for serious fact-based tasks. Like for example, if your AI agent is uh, used in legal support or documentation, then you would set the sampling temperature to lower. So that way you have you know, kind of predictable uh, and, and 
you know, fact-based output, right? So the medium would be between 0.5 to 0.7. Now this is more of a balance. This is kind of good for overall. Overall, That's why when you like, let me get rid of this so that we can see it again. As soon as you click by default, it's like 0.7 because that's kind of like a balance, which is like a general uh, sample and temperature for a majority of staff. So for example, if you're building chatbots, or email assistance so that between 0.5 to 0.7 is the more standard one now high between 0.8 to 1 now this is great for creativity so for example if you're using it for marketing or storytelling then you would increase the temperature to between 0.8 to 1. now a business use case for example would be if you're building an ai agent that writes linkedin headlines or email subject lines you would use a higher temperature right to get fresh eye-catching ideas but for compliance response agent or or something that requires predictable outcome, uh, you want to keep it low between 0.2 to 0.3, let's say, to avoid any kind of hallucinations or, or odd phrasing. All right, so the next one is timeout. Now, this is this sets how long the an AI agent waits for OpenAI to respond before treating it as a failed request, right? So if you put it to, let's say, 6,000, which is, again, it comes by default, this will be 60 seconds. So this will be ideal for generating long-form content or slow processing tasks, right? So if you put it between um, 10,000 to 15,000, which is, again, 10 seconds to 15 seconds, this is, again, great for chatbots or UIs where user expects instant answers right so a business use case for this will be if you're running an internal document summarizer for example you you give it more time like 60 seconds for example but if for for like live support bots uh, then you cut the time out to 10 seconds so the users aren't stuck waiting too long all right so the next one is max retries now this determines how many times and it then retries if like for example open ai fails due to rate limits or timeouts so if you put between zero to one that's the minimal retries now this is better for like you know developing or testing where you want to see failures really really fast now two to three which is kind of the default that comes as a default it's two uh two to three is kind of a smooth user experience in production so it reduces failed outputs from like momentary blips now a business use case for example would be if you're deploying a lead qualification agent right that handles incoming inquiries you add retry so occasional api hiccups for example don't kill your entire workflow so that's where this is used again like the max retries is not that common unless you're building something kind of on the development side then you're not going to really use this so you kind of keep it at standard all right, and the last one is called top P. Now, top P, this is like narrowing down uh, a pool of safe word choices, for example. So top P sets a threshold. Only, again, you would only use this, uh, you, you'll only use the most likely words until a probability sum is reached. Now, what that means is like, if your top P is one, anything goes, right? This is full randomness, basically. But if your top P is between 0.2 to 0.4, this will be, the output would be ultra predictable, and this is safe for responses. This is very similar to the temperature, but there's a difference between the top P and temperature. Now, top P limits which words are considered, and then temperature controls how random the choice among those words are, right? So, for example, a business use case would be if you're building a AI agent contract writer, uh, the lower top P, like 0.3, let's say, it will ensure that it sticks to standard, reliable legal terms. And if it's a social media caption generator, then you would use something like 0.8 and above to unlock more flavor and, and variety. All right, well, hopefully you learned uh, a thing or two about AI agents and how to control uh, the outcome and uh, try to make it a bit more predictable and real use case. Now, again, if you want to learn how to get your first paying client, make sure you check out the AI workshop community because I have an entire launch your AI agency uh, course with NADN where we'll literally start you from day one. It's a five week program. We help you set your need, pick your niche, set up your business. This is like step by step tutorial. Uh, we show you how to uh, pitch to clients, how to run discovery calls. We even show you all of the AI workshop because we have our own agency. So we give you all of the resources that we have to make sure that when you're getting in front of your clients, you're successful. So we provide you, for example, sample pricing, how to price, how to send proposals and everything you need in order for you to be successful AI agency owner and start making money with NNN. And then, of course, in our community, we have an absolute beginner's course as well. 
So if you're new to NADN, this is a place where you would want to start. Well, we start you from the absolute basics of AI automations and then give you step by step beginner friendly uh, tutorials as well. So that way you can learn their skill and then start to monetize it down the line. Obviously, all of my YouTube sources, uh, resources, including the NADN blueprints are all in the classroom section as well. And then we also have our calendar section, which we have daily calls that you can jump and ask us any questions. And then, of course, we have our amazing community members where people are there to collaborate with each other and help one another out and um, make really meaningful connections. So make sure you check it out. I'm going to put the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.